everybody, I've got such a cool video for you today because we have two Toyota Icons, the original and the throwback. And in this video, we're gonna find out, should you spend like 35, 40, 45 grand and just buy one, or should you go through the process of building the coolest FJ40 I have ever seen? And I'm just gonna apologize ahead of time for the wind, but we're out here. Connor, man, how you doing, buddy? Doing well, thanks for having me on. Thanks for coming out with what is one of the coolest builds I've seen in a long time. So what's the story with this? So I found, I've always loved Toyotas and I've always loved Toyota FJ40s. I think they're the classic in off-roading from Toyota. Kind of put them on the map, as you guys have said before. Um, so I found the green one, which you can see in the hood and in the doors and around the side, about two and a half years ago uh, from a gentleman that I let my excitement kind of overlook <laughs> how bad and rough the car was actually in. Uh, so I called it the Flintstones 40 because my feet could stick through the floor pans. Um, <laughs> and I quickly found out that I don't know how to weld and fix it myself. So I found the yellow one, which is a 1975 FJ40. And um, together I said, I'll take the best pieces and try to put them together myself. So I did that and again decided the engine was too slow for what I wanted to do, um, which was overlanding and camping and really getting out there. Yeah. So I found a shop um, a little bit south of Grand Junction that does engine swaps and restorations on FJ40s and um, decided to go that route. So they've had it for a little uh, over a year now and I just got it back two weeks ago. Love it. Very cool. Yeah. So FJ40, right, is the iconic Land Cruiser from the, the 70s. They built them, you know, in many parts of the world. Uh, what drew you to the original? So my dad had an old uh, Toyota blue pickup truck. Okay. And growing up, it was, I just played in it. I drove, I fake drove it around and played off-roading and camping and all sorts of games in it. Well, he sold it when I was 15. Just when I was learning how to drive, it broke my heart. And uh, as so my first car was a 4Runner, and uh, as I got into 4Running and learning the history of just Toyota off-roading, I said, well, this is, this is the original. This is what kind of put them on the map, and just the classic body style of how it looks with that Toyota reliability um, is what really drew it towards me. The other thing was the fact that with a few wrenches and, you know, tools, you can take things apart yeah. and just do it yourself. Now let's show them the coolest part of this vehicle. Let's go ahead and pop the hood. Ah. So like you talked about, right, these had a carbureted straight six to begin with. Um, and what was it like to drive with that inline six? Talk to me about that. Uh, loved the sound of it. Sounded really good. Um, but I think I could ride my bike faster <laughs> than, than it could go sometimes. So, uh, but yeah, just Sounded amazing, nice and stout, little engine, um, but I just wanted more because I do like to go up to the mountains. You know, I'm from Colorado as well, and uh, going up I-70, you're getting passed by the semis and by the avid triathletes biking. So you knew you wanted to engine swap the FJ40. Yep. Now, like, the vast majority I've seen that have been swapped to, like, a Chevy 350. Yep. Did you consider going that route? I did not. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair all. enough. Uh, I really, I really did want to keep it as close to Toyota. And then this, when I talked to the owner of the shop, I really just he sold me on the the Cummins R 2.8. Uh, it's diesel, so the gas mileage was a huge attraction to me at the time. When I was supposed to get this engine back, uh, diesel was cheaper than gas. Yep. Now it's not. So <laughs> that, that's been a little bit of a bummer. But uh, yeah, he just kind of really talked me into it. And I did quite a bit of research on YouTube and um, a lot of the forums on FJ40s. And the diesel just seemed like the way to go. I've never had a diesel, but uh, I thought, hey, I, I wanted to try it out. Now, I've got a lot, I got a lot of questions. So um, Cummins 2.8, right? Yep. Is this a crate engine that they sell? How, how does one go about buying one of these? It is, so you can go to Cummins website and just buy the this this uh, little four cylinder Cummins R2.8 engine. Wow. Um, you have to type in your VIN and register it and everything, but you can just order this engine. Uh, it is built for, it's part of their repower program. So a lot of Broncos and Scouts will have this in it, in it as well. So 
you know, I imagine it's it's more of a modern diesel, right? So it's probably got like electronic in, uh, injection. It's probably got a computer. Um, yep. Talk to me about how the shop was able to integrate that into this old Toyota. I mean, is there a computer still with this engine? There is. Yep. Yep. Um, and we can show you inside when we move inside the little Murphy gauge they have that gives those readouts and codes and everything. Um, that, to be completely honest, is a little over my head, I which bet. is why I didn't do it myself. <laughs> but uh, but no, yeah, they just they did a really good job. Um, I mean, it looks almost factory, right? There doesn't seem to be a lot of chopping. Yep. Are now, the motor mounts, are those something that they did as well, or is that something you can buy, do you know? They did have to fabricate some of those, okay, I believe, gotcha. yes. And then this is a huge uh, radiator on the front of it. Talk to me about that. Yep, so when the, when the shop originally started doing these conversions, they had an electric-powered um, radiator, and that was smaller, more normal size looking one. But the engine ran, runs pretty hot under a heavier vehicle, and so they went to this mechanical running uh, radiator that is giant but it keeps the engine nice and cool and it looks like you've got an intercooler too up front here so um, I mean it this is a this is a beautiful setup now let's go ahead and hop inside and talk about the transmission yeah wow that wind is crazy I do apologize <laughs> for picking such a crazy day so what have you done in here because a lot of this looks retro but there's some modern touches going on mm -hmm. so the Steering wheel is original. Um, I love the big steering wheel. The kind of indexing on the back just feels good on the fingers and everything. Uh, original horn, uh, original uh, speedometer and dash setup here. Um, How much of it still works? Does like the amp gauge work, the temp gauge? Yep, yep. Uh, it all still works. The fuel is actually very accurate. Uh, I was hesitant of that at first, but it's spot on actually. It's a 14 gallon tank and I've only run it down to halfway, but every time I run it down to halfway, I put it in seven gallons. So Fair enough. That's been awesome. Speedometer is actually also spot on, which was a huge surprise to me, um, but that's been awesome. So I've taken it, you know, 40, get the little app out, test how fast I'm going based on GPS, and it's been accurate every single time. Absolutely love it. So what else is original and what's been changed? Yep, so original, uh, the little light switch over here, these two are original, they do not work. Um, so ETR, so that would have been original to the FJ40? Yes. Really? Yes. Interesting, okay. Um, unless they put it in before I got it, but again, the yellow one was sitting in a field since 88, so I, <laughs> I can't imagine it was too new. Um, original, this um, is where the choke would have been. Obviously, we don't have a choke anymore. Um, these are actually new, um, although this um, vintage air Gen 4 heat and AC unit does an excellent job, I think, kind of keeping the, the vintage look, but oh, yet yeah, still being new. I love it. So um, this is um, functional air conditioning and heat all in one unit? Is correct. that how that works? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, the, the AC is something I decided to splurge for a little bit because it can get pretty hot in the summers in Moab and totally. in parts of Colorado. Uh, actually, a new stereo system as well. Uh, it's a retro audio that I think compared to the original FJ40s, again, looks very kind of original looking, but yet has Bluetooth, um, two USB ports, okay. um, radio, it's, you know, it's got phone calls, so it's got the little microphone under here. So it's, it's, got, it's kind of a hidden gem that looks original, but then it's an awesome sound system. And then up here, we've got some ARB goodies. What's going on there? Yep, so here, uh, this is where the ashtray is originally and we've installed an ARB compressor under the hood and a rear locker. And um, so rear locker, uh, stock axles though, apart from the locker yep. pretty much. Yeah. Yep, yep. And now the big question I have is, what did you do for the transmission? The transmission is an H55J um, Toyota five-speed transmission. Okay. Um, so it's, and it's awesome. <laughs> now I imagine that that was not simply just plop that in, I mean, you even talked about earlier that you had to change the wheelbase a little bit to make that fit. Yep, so the shop did quite a bit of fabrication to mate the two, um, and then because of the drive shaft coming out the backside, it required us to scoot the wheel, um, the wheel wells and the axle back three inches, which has helped actually a lot on the road. What I love about this though, right, is it looks very vintage in here, um, but like we don't see rust holes. Mm -hmm. Did you have to do like, did you have to, uh, this all looks bed line. Is that something that you had done as well? Yep, so they um, they recommend their Linex. It's a Linex poly, um, co-poly 
thing <laughs> that they did through the whole body. But before that, it was 100% no rust holes or anything. Sorry, Blazy, you're gonna scratch it. That's all right. Are you sure? This is why I didn't uh, opt for the paint on the doors, was for, for off-roading and for other dogs to uh, come <laughs> oh, up to the side. Killing me. <laughs> All right, Connor, so how do you start this bad boy up? All right, so you're gonna just click it twice, wait for our Murphy gauge here. Uh, it will kind of boot up, go through the computer. The lights and the wait to start is pretty clear. As soon as that's ready, you're good to turn it over. Wow, that's Fires way more right refined. Up. I mean, I know that there's probably not like a lot of sound deadening here, but it's like, it's not a tractor. It's not. It's nice and smooth. Um, it gets a little loud when you're when you kind of spool up the turbo and kind of go to shift <laughs> gears, but uh, not sure we'll get there on the on no. the off road. <laughs> Absolutely. And then you've got your tachometer in the Murphy gauge. Correct. Right. Okay. Yep. Very cool. All right. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of head out that way a little bit, and um, we'll see what it's like. So the last one I drove had no power steering, and no power brakes. Do you have it on this guy? Power steering, yes. Um, I originally didn't want power steering. I thought, no, I'm gonna be original and I'm Armstrong, a young guy, yep. but uh, <laughs> I'm really glad I have it now. And four wheel disc brakes. Love it. Yep. Very cool. Uh, I do love this engine, um, 161 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. And you really don't even have to touch the gas. You can just ease off the clutch and you're good and to go. And off you go. Yeah. Look at that. So we'll circle around kind of to the right here. Um, now, this is an interesting story. You actually had an FJ Cruiser before this, right? Correct. So tell me about that. Uh, I bought that from a gentleman who was one of the founding members of the Colorado FJ Cruiser Club. Yep, we can go down there left if you want to go left. In the dirt or the... Wherever. Yeah, cool. <laughs> We're still trying to here. figure <laughs> out what the best way to go is. Um, and I bought that from him. Uh, actually from a dealer, he had traded it in because his son wanted a Tacoma. Uh huh. And um, yeah, loved it. Went on a few kind of trips with it. And um, wow, look at that it torque. just crawls. So you have the FJ Cruiser. Yep. Uh, good experience overall? Overall, really good experience. Uh, I had the six speed manual, okay. which was really nice in the snow, four wheel drive all the time. Loved that. Love the off-roading capabilities. Didn't love the gas mileage on that one. This one, I tested it for the first time and got uh, just under 23 miles per gallon. And that's still with the engine kind of breaking in and everything. That's really good. So I'm happy with that. Now, of course, it is still an old 1970s Land Cruiser. So you do get a fair number of squeaks and rattles and bangs. Yes. Um, but the ride's pretty good. So suspension, is, is it stock? What has been done to it? It is a two and a half inch um, lift with Bilstein shocks um, and then a shackle reversal. Well, what we should definitely do, because I didn't realize that this thing was so put together and so done, it'd be cool to like set up a little off-road shoot, you know? Maybe we'll, awesome. we'll bring the FJ Cruiser out and, and we'll hit like a trail or something. Yeah. Because uh, you, this thing is going to be so capable. Yeah. You know, I mean, just driving around a field is one thing, but I can just, you know, it's got the articulation, the tires, 33s, you said? 33-inch uh, KO2s, yep. And then it's got the low range and the stock transfer case? Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, I think they might be, they might have taken it out of an FJ60. Uh, to me with it. I'll have to, I'll have to double check no, on that no, one. No worries. So Connor, you've owned both. You've had an FJ Cruiser and you've had an FJ40 now. Which one do you prefer? I love the FJ40. Yeah. Uh, the FJ Cruiser, an amazing car. Uh, it's, it's Toyota. It's tried, it's true, it's tested. It, it has the retro throwback, but you can't beat the original. Um, and to be honest, there's no blind spots in this car, whereas we all know in that <laughs> one, there's a fair amount. So I would go with this one every time. Fair enough. Now, is this something that you're planning on daily driving, using off-road? What, what's the use case on this? Yep, the goal is to daily drive it um, as much as I can. I do have a, a third gen 4Runner and an 01 Tacoma that I love as well. Um, so really this will be my kind of overlanding camping car that I plan on this summer taking on quite a few adventures. Sweet, love it. Yeah. Well, thank you, sir, for coming Thank you, down. Tommy. Absolute pleasure. Um, let us know what you think in the comments below. I think you're really gonna like this one because this is one of the coolest builds. Blaze has been such a bad dog this shoot, but part of the dog owning fun. We'll see you in the next episode.